When I was 15 years old, my brother and my friend Very Small Midget showed me this FPS shooter game which I didn't have too much interest in until Midget showed me a kill on grid of him throwing a cross map tomahawk and killing someone. At that moment, I said that was epic and a few months later UCZ Epicator X was born and I started playing Call of Duty Black Ops. Hence why this game will always be my favourite no matter how much you convince me. However, that doesn't really hold up as a good excuse as to why Black Ops holds up as the best Call of Duty of all time. So I made a list, checked it twice, and uh, no, wait, that's that's Christmas. I wrote down all the reasons why Black Ops is goated, and I picked the top 10 reasons. Just to remember, this is my opinion, so before anyone out there say these options are cap, they're the opinion of one person trying to fight depression in a national lockdown. So without further ado, I'm Epic but You Can Call Me Dan, and here are 10 reasons why Black Ops is the best Call of Duty of all time. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'm thinking of doing more of these, and if you like, please show your support, as it really motivates me to make more. Okay, anyway, on with the video. Number 10, RCXD holes. For those of you who didn't play Call of Duty Black Ops, this entry will seem odd as in every nuke town there's a little hole on either side of a map big enough for an RCXD to fit into. This remote control car laced with explosives can travel around the outside of a map, over a ramp, into the enemy spawn and take out the opposition from behind. In Call of Duty Black Ops, the majority of maps had them. Maps such as Grid, Hanoi, Radiation, WMD, and many more. What was unique is that these RCXD holes would go up into camper heavy areas and protect your toy car from easy explosion, whilst granting you the ability to get a sneaky kill on an unsuspecting camper. These were a tool that not only benefited the car, but also added an extra element to the game. Something like this is so genius that it hasn't featured on any Treyarch Call of Duty since, apart from Nuketown remakes, and that's incredible to think. Number 9. The weapons. As we've seen from newer Call of Duty titles, weapon balancing is more important as you need to make sure that each weapon is unique in its own right and caters to the chosen playstyle. Not much more can be said other than the Black Ops weapons were perfectly balanced. I can already see a lot of you typing about how the AK or the FAMAS were a meta back then, but if you really played the game then you'd know that you could be taken out by almost anything. People used Galils, Commandos, HK-21s, L96A1s, RPKs, even the Enfield occasionally showed up. For any Modern Warfare players, the Enfield was effectively the Scar H of Black Ops, but people still used it to great effect. Number 8. The Contracts You can have those days where, god knows why, you're really deflated looking at all the guns and game modes, scratching your head thinking, what on earth could I do to have fun? Welcome Contracts. So in Black Ops you had a COD point system in place where every game you'd gain COD points. These could be used to buy camos, weapons, perks, calling cards, contracts, emblems, where you would pay roughly 400 COD points and had 40 minutes to get 10 headshots with the Org. Fail and you lose your points, but succeed and you get 2,800 COD points as a reward. These were super fun and unlike current XP tokens only measured the 40 minutes over game time played rather than time overall. Therefore you had time to relax after a dull game, focus up, then complete the contract with ease. It was the first Call of Duty to do contracts and even though newer COD titles have contracts with terrible stickers or calling cards on offer, no Call of Duty sold the contract offer more than Black Ops. Number 7, the inactive grenade launcher glitch. On Modern Warfare 2, players found spots in which you could shoot a grenade launcher off the spawn and take out enemies early on. At the start of Black Ops this was possible and given the negative response this had in Modern Warfare 2, Treyarch decided to make the grenade launchers inactive for the first 8 seconds apart from S&D where they were inactive for the first 13 seconds. What they didn't realise is that this caused the grenade to leave the barrel at extreme velocity and bounce around the map and if a player was to get hit it would cause instant death. Clans such as Worldwide Kill Camps, Bomb Defense Daily, Ricochet Tube, French Cross Kills, German Across Kills, Wicked Bank Shots, XAMK, XNTA, Impressive Tubes, Authentic Ricochet, <laughs> Authentic Rick, sorry, Authentic, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say it. Authentic, I, I can't, I can't, I can't take them seriously. And still to this day, the Dead Clan found inventive and almost impossible ways to take down opponents. If you want to look these up, there are links in the description. This art form became tubing, not noob tubing, and just became the funniest way to get kills in this game. Number 6, the Emblem Editor. This is a controversial one, as when it comes to having free creativity, you're going to get the odd few who go with profanity. Profanity mainly being and luckily there was much to offer as you only had a select few layers and around 500 images to select. Regardless, this became a fun idea that progressed further and gave players unlimited ability to make the coolest looking emblems then posting them onto YouTube as tutorials, which racked up views and helped a lot of channels out. You also had a lot of terrible emblems too, in which you can find a lot of compilations showcasing the best and worst of emblems from Black Ops on YouTube. Nevertheless, this was a really fun addition to the game and made players unique in their own way. Number 5, 
Dynamic maps. A good Call of Duty requires good map designs. If players are going to be spending hours upon hours upon hours grinding out the game, each map has got to be unique in design and offer multiple ways in which you can use that map to your advantage. Having a dynamic element to a map not only helps the game from a fun standpoint, but can also mix up the play and cause players to change their tactics. Black Ops had exactly that, where maps such as Kowloon had grapple areas, Discovery had areas of a map that could be shot out, and other maps like Radiation and Stockpile had doors which could be opened and closed at the press of a button. This made for very interesting domination game modes, as if you wanted the B flag you could close off the area causing players to open the door and flank around. This was such a fun little addition to maps, and really made playing the maps more infuriating, but also helped you work on a new strategy. Number 4, The Campaign Story. Okay, spoilers, this entry will contain a lot of info about the world World at War and Black Ops campaign, so if you don't want to know then skip this time period. So in World at War, you end the storyline on the Russian side playing as Dmitri being Reznov's right hand man. In Black Ops you follow the story of Alex Mason, hooked up in an interrogation room asking what the numbers mean. With a random voiceover on the intercom you are guided through the events of the Vietnam War where you meet Woods, Hudson, Weaver, Bowman and Reznov. As the game progresses you learn about Nova 6, a gas worked on by Nazi scientist Steiner, and piques the interest of Kravchenko and Dragovich. They turn against their own, leading Reznov to brainwash Mason and lead him on a mission to kill all three of these men, with Reznov being right by his side. Well, not quite. See, Reznov is there, but in reality, you discover he's in Mason's head. This storyline has everything. Continuation, flashbacks, betrayal, gruesome scenes, and so much more. For me personally, watching Dimitri die is one of the most heartbreaking moments in gaming. Knowing what he has to endure during World at War, just to die to your own countrymen after locking you up, even brainwashes you to fuel that hatred inside you, making you want these men to suffer. Number 3, Theatre Mode. Even though this caused a lot of problems with connection and latency in Black Ops, Black Ops Theatre is just goated. The ability to record clips or angles from a current game you are playing, adding dolly cameras to follow tomahawks or grenade launchers, multiple speed settings, saving clips into a folder to save forever, also posting on the community page to see what others have hit, and even having watch parties with your friends. Just looking back on this theatre mode and then looking at what Treyarch have given us in Cold War, it's super depressing to see given that Cold War has came out 10 years after this game. And the amount of tools and options that you have in theatre mode to play around with is just honestly embarrassing when you look at how gaming is meant to move forward and we can't even access Fireteam Dirty Bomb save files. This theatre mode though helped a lot of people create the best quality montages, tips, videos and just everything in general. Number 2 Nazi Zombies. Following from what was just a cool mini bonus game from World at War, Treyarch furthered the zombies storyline by expanding the storyline of Dempsey, Nikolai, Takio and Richtofen. Starting off with Kino de Toten, otherwise translated into Theatre of the Damned, and Five held in the Pentagon, everything worked so well within both these maps, with Kino probably becoming the most played map of all time. They added a new zombies map to each of the four DLCs, with Ascension taking place on a rocket base, Call of the Dead in an Estonian shipwreck near a lighthouse, which had famous actors including George Romero telling an actual zombie that they don't look dead enough, that is a mood I don't know what is, Shangri-La taking place in a jungle with close quarter combat areas, and finally Moon where you start in Area 51 with an increasing horde of zombies flooding the base so you have to teleport up to a moon base where you have three excavators that constantly want to breach the bases till you lose oxygen while surviving the zombie hordes. I could honestly go on for hours about all these maps but god not only did every map have its own unique design but everything just worked perfectly and provided hours upon hours of fun and enjoyment. And number one, wager matches. Wager matches were introduced where six players would gamble 100 COD points, 1000 COD points or 10,000 COD points at a chance to win big. Four game modes were on rotation, first was Sticks and Stones, the game mode where all you had was a ballistic knife, a crossbow and a tomahawk. The ballistic knife gave you 25 points for a melee, 100 points if you shoot someone directly, the crossbow also awarded you 100 points, but the real wild card was the tomahawk, as hitting a player with a tomahawk not only gave you 10 points, but would bankrupt the player, taking away all their points. Next off, we have Gun Game. Gun Game is a first to 20 kills game with a twist that everyone starts off with the same weapon, but as you kill a player with weapon 1, you move on to the second weapon, then the third, the fourth, the fifth, and so on until you reach the ballistic knife. Everyone has the same weapon rotation, and not only that, but if you manage to melee kill a player, or if a player makes a mistake, they get moved back one weapon, thus meaning they have to get another kill with the same weapon in order to move forward. The third game mode was one in the chamber, where accuracy was key. You start off with a 1911 pistol with one bullet inside and three lives. If you shot an enemy, you gained 100 points with an extra bullet, but if you missed your shot, then you better run, squirrel, as you now have to knife your opponent who may or may not have a loaded gun. 
Every time a player lost all three lives, you were granted a 10 point survivor bonus too, giving people who ended on the same amount of kills an extra 10 points for staying alive longer, meaning therefore you would have the advantage. Finally, Sharpshooter, the game mode where you all start with the same class loadout and random attachments on the weapon. Each kill would grant you 100 points plus a perk. The first perk was Sleight of Hand Pro, the second being Lightweight Pro, the third being Steady Aim Pro, and the fourth would give you a times 2 multiplier. These games lasted 5 minutes and 15 seconds, with a weapon rotation every 45 seconds, meaning you'd be given 7 different loadouts, and in the final 45 seconds you had a times 2 power up, that meant if you had a 4 kill streak, then you'd be getting 400 points per kill, or 100 points if you were knifing. So you had every opportunity to catch up and take out your enemies. All these game modes have been replicated in future titles, but the COD point wager nature of this, plus the split second changes that these games could offer, plus the minimap area of larger maps just worked so fluently in Black Ops and made this game an instant classic. So those are the 10 reasons why I believe Black Ops is the best Call of Duty of all time. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know down below and if you're new to my channel I please, please, please recommend you hit that subscribe button because I want to do more of these videos Why I have a chance in lockdown and if I get enough support behind them then I'm more than happy to do a lot of these. I've got a lot of these in mind. But anyway, that has been it for this video. Leave a like if you have enjoyed. On your left is a top 10 reasons why the knifing is handicapped in Cold War. And on your right is a playlist of all the other top 10 videos I have done. Thank you for watching and stay epic.